Now to tonight's special report, looking at the dramatic rise in the number of people dying from motor neurone disease and what might be causing it. The number of deaths here from MND has soared over the past 30 years. Across the country, it's estimated more than 2,000 people have it. That's about one in every 11,000 people. Neuroscientists say this increase can't be put down purely to an ageing population or advances in diagnosis. And some scientists think the cause of the increase could be environmental. One theory is that exposure to toxins produced by blue-green algae might be a trigger. Algal blooms are a common problem in many regional waterways, particularly when it's hot and dry. As Rachel Carbonell explains, there are now growing calls for the link to be investigated. For Tim Trembath, riding his motorbike alongside his wife Karen used to be one of life's great joys. He can't anymore because he has motor neurone disease, or MND, which causes progressive muscle weakness and eventually paralysis. Losing the function of your limbs is just horrible. You know, there's a real kick in the guts. He wants to know what caused it. Just too many people getting this type of disease. 10% of cases are inherited. For the other 90%, like Tim, there's no known cause. A number of scientists are investigating whether the reason for these sporadic cases increasing is environmental. They're looking into a range of potential factors, including pesticides and heavy metals. But one of the suspected triggers is a toxin produced by blue-green algae called BMAA. There are studies now showing that people that live beside lakes and rivers where there are frequent algal blooms or cyanobacterial blooms have an increased risk of contracting motor neurone disease. Rachel Dunlop has been studying the neurotoxin here and in the US. She says international research shows a correlation. That doesn't mean that we have evidence for a direct cause and I want to emphasise that just like people that smoke don't necessarily get lung cancer, this is probably a risk factor. A lot of people live near lakes with algal blooms, but not everyone gets MND. But there are definitely hot spots of MND around the world. It's been identified in France, in the US, and we believe there could be one in uh, New South Wales. The prevalence of MND in Griffith in the New South Wales Riverina district is estimated to be about five times the national average. I think there's no one in this town that wouldn't know someone who's already passed away from this terrible disease or, the, or someone who's currently suffering from it. The town is close by to Lake Wyangan, which is prone to blue-green algal blooms. The area has become a focus for some scientists looking into whether the toxin BMAA plays a role in triggering motor neurone disease in some people. Is BMAA a direct cause of all motor neurone disease? I think that's unlikely. Is it a contributing factor to some sporadic motor neurone disease? I think that's highly likely. Professor Dominic Rose says there's a lack of nationwide data on possible MND clusters in Australia. He says MND is not a notifiable disease, so identifying areas with potentially high rates of MND and what environmental triggers might be at play is difficult. We should do everything possible to try and work out whether this is a contributing factor to motor neurone disease. It's not just good enough, I don't think, to just go, oh well, I don't know. New South Wales Health says there can be big variations in MND between areas and over time, and there's no definitive evidence of a causational link between blue-green algal toxins and the disease. This is Lake Kajeligo, about 130 kilometres up the road from Griffith. This town, which shares its name with the lake, has a population of about 1,400 people. But in recent years, four residents here have developed the usually rare motor neurone disease. In a small town like Lake Jellico, to have four or maybe five cases is it's too much. Tim Trembath is one of the Lake Jellico residents with MND. He wants more funding for scientists to probe possible environmental triggers for the disease. As far as the connection between that blue-green algae and my disease, um, I'm hoping that they find a connection because I think if they find a connection, they'll find a cure. If they disprove it, they can go, you know, spend their resources some looking somewhere else. It's just one of the many mysteries of MND that all those affected by the disease would like to see solved. Rachel Carbonell, ABC News.